VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Guys, we're starting the year on a very, very big note because the guest I'm having here today, I'm just super excited. My guest today is amazing. He comes from South Africa. This gentleman has had a huge impact in the South African music industry and African music industry at large. He's been in the industry for more than two decades, and I would actually rightfully kind of describe him as somebody who's been moving the culture, you know, influencing the youth very positively. He's a social entrepreneur, he's a media personality, he's a media owner, he's a DJ, he's an artist, oh my God, he's a philanthropist, and then let me see, he's an author as well. And uh, what else, what else, what else? Oh my God, like, I think I've interviewed a lot of people, but not so many were this accomplished. So welcome to the show, DJ Sbu. I, I'm humbled to to meet the great um, Anyeko. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the invite, my sister. Oh my God, it's really amazing to have you. And when you say the great Anyeko, I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I'm sitting with a legend. I'm humbled. I think um, the internet has made the world too small. Everybody with a cell phone um, plugs into content from all over the world. So your work speaks for itself. Uh, I've been in the culture for quite some time, and I do follow what happens in... Um, the different parts of the continent, East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa. Because when you travel and you go anywhere um, all over the world, they just say Africa. Yeah. <laughs> they think it's one country, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's our responsibility as um, the people that stay in this continent to, to, to know each other, to know our countries, to know the different cultures and just follow what is going on. So um, for those who are celebrating the New Year's, I want to say Happy New Year to you. But I'm one of those people that are, um, celebrate their New Year's on the 23rd of September. Well, um, we, we call, they call ours African New Year, but I call it our real New Year. We, we don't have snow during our, our New Year. We don't, we don't um, um, we are not accustomed to Western ways of doing things, although we acknowledge mm. because that's how we grew up. But it's a beautiful thing also to um, seek um knowledge of self and and i'm humbled to be here thank you how are you how are you doing god is great it's the grace of god that one is still here it's the grace of god that i'm alive um you're speaking about the different um titles that one hold i cannot believe titles are man-made language is man-made um titles don't matter status doesn't matter to mm. me i think what matters the most is that i'm a father and i'd like to believe that i'm a good father I'm a father not only to my children. I think I'm a father to a lot of young people in the culture in Southern Africa. Definitely. Because I've been in the game for quite some time. Definitely. Yeah, yeah you are a father. Yes, And ma in the future, you're going to be a godfather. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, it's an honor to sit next to you. Oh my God, it's such an honor. I'm so starstruck. Like if you, if those who are watching can see me just looking and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not sure what I want to ask next, even though we just started. So... I wanted to ask you, you know, for somebody who's been in the game for quite some time, you know, you've been on radio, so the voice is obviously known. You've been on TV. Um, you're a philanthropist. You know, you connect with the youth. You don't just speak to them or they don't just hear your music, but you come on ground and, you know, do various things with them. So you're very connected to the ground as well. Do you still find that there are instances where your reputation and your impact and your work supersedes the individual? That's a very good question. I think a lot of musicians, sometimes we forget that we are musicians. Mm. Soccer players practice, they go to training every day. Some of them practice two, three times a day. Yeah. Basketball players, they go to practice daily. Uh, a musician has to be making music. A DJ has to be DJing. Yeah. A podcaster has to be podcasting. Mm. I'm, I'm inspired, I'm a podcaster too, but for me to sit here, I won't even say when we were recording this episode, but for me to find out that you've already, you are already so many months ahead of your work and you're <laughs> done, you're, you're done. I'm just impressed to walk into your studio and see your, your schedule and you're like, I'm done for the year. I'm done for the year. For me, I resonate with those types of people because oh, wow. it's people who work ahead. It's people who take themselves and their job and their work seriously. Mm. It's people who know what they want out of life and it's people who know how to use their time. Uh, that inspires me. I'm, I'm the same. I've, I've done, I think, some incredible things with my life from community radio, campus radio, commercial radio, 
um, online radio, the biggest commercial radio in South Africa, the biggest radio station in South Africa, music, uh, and all these different things, albums and, and writing books. And I know what it takes to achieve all of that. I, I, I often say to people, I'm not one of the most brightest or brilliant people. I think I'm one of the most hardest working people. And I always say to people, hustle will always trump um, talent when talent doesn't hustle. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they are, they take advantage of the fact that they're talented and they're too relaxed. But you got to hustle because you're going to find people like us who are not as talented as you are, but we're going to outwork you. You know, if you, if you look at Onika, she's already done recording 2023, already in what, like end of August, <laughs> September. There's people like that. Their work ethic drives them because they love what they do. They're passionate about what they're doing. But you find that as a musician, I'll be posting myself as a fashion person on my social media platforms. Mm. When you come visit me, you never see my music. You never hear my music. Yeah. And I don't understand why a lot of young artists do that. It's understandable when you're already an established artist. When we come to your Instagram, we, you know, we just only see you with fashion and clothes. That's fine because mm -hmm. you're already established. Yeah. But if you're still building, let's come to your social media and let's come across what you say you do. Yeah. Oh, my God. We are so similar. It's like if I had to say something, I'd say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and then again, you also can't control how people sell themselves on their social media platforms. Mm. You, you can't have your Instagram, the other name, your YouTube is the other name, your Twitter is your other name. On the other platform, you post whatever. You, just be consistent with your mm. brand. What are you building? Who are you? What do you do? What do you represent? What do you stand for? So, so in other words, you're actually saying like, this is what gives you longevity or this is how you actually build on anything you want to build on. Yes, ma'am. By taking advantage of every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month. If I'm concentrating on my new album, my new music now, it's a season for me to give my audiences music. It's mm. a season for me to interact with the creative community, to put out my music out there to the world. But I know that in the next five, six months, it's a new season for me to release my new book. Mm. I've got three best-selling books. I've just finished writing my fourth book now. So I know that's a new season. I'm putting out my, my books. I'm, I'm giving talks. I'm going to varsities. I'm sharing my wisdom. Mm. I'm sharing that type of content on my social media. And then there's going to be time where I find ways to measure all of that. Mm. Where as much as you see my music, but you still can hear that I'm actually an author. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I'm a broadcaster, I'm a podcaster at the same time, right? How does all of these things merge? When you watch my music video, you'll see product placement of my products or my businesses. So you always have to find a way as a creative person mm. out there to make it all merge seamlessly. Mm. And I think with, um, with experience, I've been able to do that well. I, I, will, I will not say that um, I've been good at it or I'm, 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 I had it all figured out. Mm. I think I... I'm, I'm blessed enough to go with the spirit. I'm blessed to know that I'm, I'm expressing myself through all these different mediums. Whether I'm writing a book or I'm releasing a song, whether I'm putting out a postcard, podcast episode or a radio show, mm. whether I'm starting a new company or a new investment, whether I'm getting into a new venture, this is all me. Yeah. This is me expressing myself in all these different ways that God has blessed me with, right? Right, but I still don't understand how you get to do all these things. I still don't get it. You know, you're explaining, saying like, yes, you have to find a way to do it. It's hard, man. It's hard. You know, I, I'm I'm in PR. I'm 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 a media personality, like broadcaster by profession. I ended up in PR by mistake because all my friends were like, "Yo, you're in media, and you know how to write, and you know us. Help us." And I was like, "Okay, I'm already working as a publicist. You know, someone might as well pay for my time." But then along the way, you know, I've tried to find myself again because i'm originally a broadcaster i'm a storyteller and pr is also in line with storytelling so you know have running my agency r doing all the work with all the artists still finding time to you know find time to speak to you and all the other artists i want to speak to and produce my podcast that already is a lot <laughs> i'm not writing any books i'm not producing any music i'm not on radio i don't have like yeah dude it's a matter of perspective, how you look at it. You, you need to explain to me how you manage to do all these things because I'm telling you, you are one of one. I, I appreciate that and I'm humbled. 
you say to me, you don't write any books, right? <laughs> and this is um, 20, 23 hours ago. You wrote, I can probably say this is almost 800 words. This is just one Instagram post from you. You're posting about Apple Podcasts. An all new season of my podcast, VIP Access, oh, yes. has taken flight. And I'm so happy and thankful to see this feature on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Freaking front page. I started listening to podcasts in 2020 before I produced my first season. Oh, that lo that's already a page in your book, right? So it's perspective. You seeing it as a social media post. I'm seeing it as a page in your book. So there's nothing different that I write from my books that is so far off from my ah. social media. It's similar. It's just that on my books, it would have been edited by an editor. And when it comes out, it comes out packaged differently. But it's still the same person. Oh, my God. Exactly. So you've written how many pages? The day before then, you had written another, you had written another caption. Friday night was a blast. Thank you to all who showed up <laughs> and showed love at Yunganisha, um, Lab Official, um, Ben Tisek, Album Listening, even that's another page, right? Or that's another paragraph on your book. Look how many pages you're writing. This podcast on its own, it's already your book, right? So it's up to how you, how you see it, but also and for new artists and new creatives out there, I know that it requires a team. Yeah. And a team can be expensive in the beginning. That's why a lot of us, I think, we end up bringing our homies and our friends or our mm. sisters. But sometimes we have to be careful. Are they competent enough? Can they do the work? Mm. Are they just riding along because it's you? Um, can they, are they hard workers? Are they willing to put in the time? What agreements do you have with them that when this thing that you guys are building together succeeds, what's gonna happen? So you're not gonna have problems in the future where they say, I supported your dream, but now you're successful, you probably don't take my calls anymore, and those type of things. So as a new artist or creative, find the right people to bring to your team. Yes, it might be one or two of your homies, but um, find a way to get those people bringing something to the table so that your, your star can shine, your star can rise. Because your strength is to make the music. Your strength is to broadcast. But their strength is to make sure that you look great on visuals. Her strength is to make sure that the sound of this podcast sounds crisp when people listen to it. Mm. So everybody's got their own role to play. So try and, and find a way to build a good team without having to break the bank. Yo, jeez. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> you know you're on radio, so you know when you insert the fire yes, <laughs> sounds. What? It's so amazing. Like, everything you say actually makes so much sense. And, you know, this is why I, I, I have this podcast, because a lot of the people who see me with somebody, especially the celebrities and artists, they think... Um, I don't know, they think sometimes it's all about work or all about a specific project, but then there are these kind of conversations which sometimes I'm privy to, which are so inspiring and even teach me a lot that you know I felt like surely more people should get to hear this and learn from these kind of people. So I think what you've said is so powerful in the sense that there are a lot of young people who ask questions like, how do I start to do this? How do I write a book? How do I start a career in you know, broadcast? And basically what you're saying is if you love something and you do something, that's the, the first step. You know, build on what you already have. Yes. If you want to write a book, what have you already written? Yes. Can you put that together? Because that's part of your story. That's part of your narrative. Yes. I just never saw it that way. Nobody, nobody can be best at being you than you. Yeah. So like you must that. work hard to be the best you you can be because you just you're that. just so unique. You're amazing. So we've read, we've all written so many books. We just didn't know. Yes, man. <laughs> we just don't package it in a way that you know it is a book. Yeah. And now it's easier. You use platforms like about Chat GPT four, and um, all of your social media posts and the pictures that you've been putting out. Find a way to creatively package all of that. Mm. Work with other people who are professionals in that space. Work with editors so they can help you put your words together in a manner which. You know, it, it sounds readable mm. to, to, to the audience out there. And um, you can do anything, man. Like, as I'm saying, titles and, and, and status is man-made. Who said, if I'm this, I can't be that? Who said, if I release albums, I can't write books? Who said, if I write books, I can't be a business person? If I'm a business person, I can't be a broadcaster. You can be anything you want to be. Mm. It's the right time right now. The whole world is, is right here. Take advantage of that. 
Kids from all over the world are taking advantage of it. They're selling us content online. They're creating podcasts. They're putting out music. They're on crypto. They've got Shopify stores. They're selling us merchandise. Some kids are trading. Some are on crypto. Some are on Web 3.0. It's, it's a whole world, man. It's a whole world that we are, what we're living in here. And um, it makes me happy to be a part of it, especially somebody who hustled hard before there was this um, internet boom or AI revolution. To be experiencing it in my lifetime, it's quite a blessing. And it makes me happy to be getting these types of platforms because then I encourage younger people to say, you don't know what you have. It was tough. It was harder for us. True. We ran around in the streets. We tried to know people. We couldn't even DM our favorite people. We couldn't even speak to them. Like yeah. They were just over there. They were so far off. But right now, you can speak to anyone all over the world. I was checking out the VMAs and... Um, Jeez, man, Bernabo just filled up a stadium in the U.S. Bernabo just filled up a stadium in South Africa. Yeah. Um, Thames, Rams, um, Wizkid, Davido, um, the Amapiano wave. And I don't want to call it a wave. It's a beautiful time we're yeah. living in. So if, if you're not participating in all of this internet boom or digital revolution, um, I think you are setting yourself back. When I walked in here and I was sitting over there, they're telling me that um, one gig here, yeah, I don't how much is it again? How many Kenyan shillings? One gig when you buy it? 99. 99? Just 99 shillings. How crazy is that? In South Africa, one gig of data is a hundred rands. A hundred rands is equivalent to what like almost six American dollars? One gig. That's how expensive internet wow. is in South Africa. Yes. That's quite expensive. Yes, you guys are ten times cheaper. And we still complain that it's so so expensive. I mean, it's cheaper <laughs> in Tanzania. We complain. Data is so it's off the roof. Like if you ask me, it's very expensive. If you ask me, so I couldn't even think of a situation that it would be more expensive <laughs> than it already you is. Are ten times actually, you are almost fifteen times and cheaper. And it's, it's still expensive. It's cheaper even in Tanzania. It's still expensive. I mean, it's expensive in in uh, in the context that. We, we use it, it's, it's almost like daily bread or yes. water or air. It's like, yes, So air shouldn't breath. be so expensive, right? Charge me anything like for calling or something, but data, data is life. So you guys are <laughs> buying one gig for an equivalent 10 South African rands or even less, but you're still complaining that it's expensive. Now yes. imagine young people who are unemployed, some of them who are unemployed graduates, some of them who can't get opportunities. Some of them are always ask for experience when they finish their, their degrees. They can't access the internet. It's barrier to entry, the, mm. the, the fact that it's expensive. Yeah. The cheaper it can be, imagine how many young people can flood the internet and creatively express themselves and create careers for mm. themselves. A lot, a lot, a lot. I want to talk to you about your music um, side because you have many, many, many sides. Yes, ma'am. There's this one song, uh, Lengoma, that you did with Zahara. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. Do you, do you <laughs> even know how impactful this song was? Do you know? Do you at, have an idea? At that time, I didn't know. But as the years went by, I mean, I'd hear it in bars in London. I'd be in New York. I'll hear it in clubs. And I, and I guess um, now as the music evolves, I'm glad that I, I, I have made the decision to make music again. So um, what we did with Zahara was historical. And I'm glad that you 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 loved it and I appreciate oh it. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you this, and I'm a hundred percent sure I don't think there's any one venue, you know, venue, club, establishment that has never played this song. It would not be possible because this song plays everywhere. And then it's one of those songs that has played for such a long time. Yes, ma'am. That it tends to exist. It's like a timeless hit or a classic. Classic. So I when you, you hear it, it, it would actually make sense to be played right now at Kunye, at the club today. Yes, ma'am. And then you'll remember when, when I was growing up, when I was in the club, when I used to party before COVID, you know, so you're oh, like, yeah. where is this song from? Because it's the song that exists, you know, back then, now. It's like past, present, future song. Isn't it beautiful that as creatives, we must strive to make timeless music that is impactful? in people's lives, mm. as opposed to just only always trying to make a hit. 
if you go into the studio with a mindset of trying to make a hit, which we all do as musicians, because yeah. everybody wants their work, you know, to become of big. Of course. But I think sometimes we get too caught. It's like an actress who's trying to remember her lines and who's forgetting about the art of acting yeah. and showing us the skill they have in acting. And they focus more on remembering the lines. So we focus more on the money side of, of our creativity, that it's, it has to be a hit. It has to make people dance. It has to have this hook. It has to be relevant with what's, on, what's the top 10 on radio right now. And we forget to make music that is ding, 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 ding. that is Toto, right? Mm. That, that, is, that, is, that is the African song. Mm. And then you listen to Shakira. She does that World Cup song. What was it again? It was um, Waka it's time Waka. For eh, Africa. Eh. That yeah. was not her song, though. She remixed an already old school Cameroonian classic, mm. right? Which is African, right? And she. She remade it and she made it so modern that the newer generation thought mm. it was hers. But then how do you make music like what um, Papa Wemba used to make? How yeah. do you make music like Your Soul your so Endure? Yeah. How do you make music like all of those greats? Yes. The Fela Kutis of this world. That's why I love Burner Boy so much. He, he is a, the spirit of Fela Kuti reawakened. And we, we thank him for the role he's playing in, in African music and all the other brothers and sisters. But what I want to say is Let's make music that is meaningful, that is impactful, that is inspiring, that is motivating, and that takes people on a journey because that's our job as musicians, mm. to awaken um, those emotions in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And it's even much better if we focus on, make, on making more positive music. I'm mm -hmm. not saying the whole world is perfect and it's all positive, yeah. but let's focus more on making quality music that over time it can stand the test of time and it can become classics that become um timeless people's um people's lives soundtracks yeah. i don't know if i'm making sense yeah soundtrack of our lives yeah yeah um when was the song recorded that was recorded in um i think it was 2010 just during I think the that world was cup yeah. 2010, 2011. And it was kind of at the height of Zahara's career. Uh, Zahara had not dropped yet. We were still working on Zahara. Mm. At the time, I was still... Yes, I was still owning a label called TS Records. Um, she was still new. She was a breath of fresh air. When people heard on my song... She, she was already on people's radar. Everybody was kind of watching her. Yeah, at the time, at they the first time. heard on, on that song. Yeah. This is before her album dropped. They, yeah. They heard on that song. Yeah. People were like... We don't yeah, care but about before, before her who, album who? dropped, yeah. this time she was already on people's radar. Everyone because of was that like, song, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And people exactly. Are like, Who's this person on this song? Yeah. We're like, she's about to drop. <laughs> she's working on her album, and she was mentored by I don't know if you know the band Mafigizolo. Very well. Yeah. Um. Shout out to Mafigizolo for also flying the flag all over the world. Sis mm. from Mafigizolo, the the female vocalist on Mafigizolo, um, mentored Zahara. At the time when I released my single, she was on the road with Ntlantla. She was mm. staying with Sis Ntlantla at Sis Ntlantla's house. Because mm. at the time, um, Sis Ntlantla was, was married to my business partner, TK, at the time. And I really would like to give Sis Ntlantla an incredible um, thank you for the role she played in mentoring her. Such that when, when she came up with her own project, she was ready to face mm. the public, to do performances. She was media trained to do interviews and, and all of that other stuff. So I, I just want to congratulate and um, appreciate the history that we made together. I mean, I want to congratulate you. You're a legend. And, you know, to have you on my podcast is really a special moment for me and I think for everybody listening. Um, so how did you make this song with Zahara? Like, tell, do you remember the yeah, making so of this song? May uh, Robbie Malinga's soul rest in peace. One of the greatest um, producers South Africa has ever produced, co-producing with um, Mjali Fatebe, mm. incredible, awesome, legendary producer in South Africa as well. Um, it's them who came up with the idea that, you know what, um, as much as the song is, is blowing up and it's, it's buzzing, let's have an acoustic version, version on, on, on her album. Right, and um, little did we know that her album was gonna become very big. It became very, very big. It's, it's. I think one of the highest selling albums of all time in South African music Period. history. Yeah. After, after no, after Mama, the late great Mama Brenda Fasimay, so rest in peace. She holds that record. Um, so when that happened, I mean, for me, the focus was as much as I was dropping music because I was 
involved in the label and, and, and I was so highly involved in the label at the time is before I became a full-time businessman. Um, I, was, I was so excited to see her shine. I was looking forward to see her shine. I was looking forward to hear the whole, in, to, to see the whole industry receive her new album because she had worked very hard with her album. And she used to be somebody who used to sing with a guitar. And she was, um, you know, create a relationship with my partner, TK, in the Eastern Cape. Um, introduced her to his wife then, at the time, his, his ex-wife, Mrs. Ntlantla Ngiza, um, now Ntlantla Mafu. And um, we, and Mrs. Ntlantla was a part of our label as well, and she was in the family. So how we would make music, we would all used to interact and just exchange ideas all the time. Tantra would have ideas, bounce them off with Zahara, or Robbie would give me a call, or Jake's, or sometimes be like, where are you? Ugo Pimfan, come to the studio, come to the mm -hmm. studio now. You know, those type of things. So we had that type of relationship because we were living in the, and we were running the label at the time, and it was a small indie label. But we we're all doing greatly well. Um, at the time, I also remember we were working with um, the greatest South African hip hop lyricist of all time according to his peers, other rappers. When you ask them their top five, he's always number one. His name is Lindam Kiza, pro may so rest in peace. He was a part of the label at the time as well. So you can just only imagine the spirit of um, creativity, the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood that we had in mm. the label at the time. So you couldn't help but produce that type of music. I can imagine. Yeah. Because yeah. it carries with it a lot of, I feel, personality, a lot of soul, a lot of your community, I kind of feel it. I kind of feel the vibe. It's the kind of song um, that makes you feel like it wasn't just produced hurriedly. Yes, ma'am. So yeah. I, I, I heard Tina Adore's voice for the first time a few weeks ago, um, the Kenyan sister who's responsible for bringing me here. And when I heard her <laughs> voice, I, I was thinking, is this Shade? Is this Shade? Shade is a band, as you would know, the lead singer from Shade. Um, her parents originate from Nigeria. Nigeria. But her voice and just what she's been able to do with her career, that she wouldn't even release music for 10 years and would always miss her and just wait for her. For me, Zahara has always struck me as those types of artists. So when mm. I heard Tina for the first time, I, I, I saw her already there. And that's why I was excited to come to Kenya and be here and collaborate with her and record some new music with her because she just awakened something in me. She inspired me. When I listened to I'll Be There, which is our current brand new single, it's a scripture from the Bible, right? And if you listen to the song, spiritual song, positive song, encouraging song, but also very musical. Mm. For me, I don't even care about what genre it is. It's, is it a good song? Sometimes we get, we get trapped as, as music um, creatives in, in falling in the trap of the genre. Yeah. But is it a good song that you're making? Mm. And, and when, when we made I'll Be There, it's a song that I, the beat I'd actually initially gave it to, sent it to one of the biggest Ama Piano vocalists in South Africa. His name is Amos, whom I love and is one of my favorites. Um, I think he didn't like the beat. And um, mm -hmm. when, when um, the CEO of Binary Records, Lunga, sent it to Tina, mm. Tina, I think, she recorded the song, I think, the same day. Um, and then the song became something incredible. It's been banging in South Africa throughout the festive season. But um, I would like to say you guys have got incredible talent in, in this country. And I'm looking forward to seeing and meeting more, more artists from Kenya. Mm. And I'd like to also give my sister Tina Adore her props. And if you, if you haven't heard our new song, go check it out. Go search for DJ Swoo, Tina Adore. I'll be there. And the rest of the other songs that we're going to put out. That's amazing. That's so amazing. I mean, that's part of the reason why I, 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 you know, I love that you're here in Kenya. I love the kind of individual you are and the kind of artist you are because, you know, having been in the industry for this long, you know, being so established, knowing all the A-listers, you're still very keen to look at other sounds from different countries, pick out, you know, the future stars of tomorrow. And, you know, working with Tina is really amazing. So, Thank you for that. I really love the song. Tina is a star. <laughs> she is. Tina is a star. I mean, I got introduced to the love that East Africa has when I collaborated with a, a brother of mine, Ali Kiba. Shout out to Ali Kiba, wherever he is, my brother, showing you love. Um, and then, you know, Ali Kiba in, invited me to Tanzania and he started showing me the scene. 
And um, as you would know, the relations that, you know, both countries have, Kenya and, and Tanzania. Mm. I got more introduced to Kenya and shout out to my business partner, Nick Regisford, um, who, who is married to um, uh, Liz Ogumbo, who's from here in Kenya. And I want to give a shout out to my sister, Liz Ogumbo, as well. I was just introduced to this culture. And for me, this is this is my new home. So <laughs> I'll be looking for an apartment here, and I'll, I'll probably buy an apartment or welcome, a house. Welcome, welcome home. Feel at home. Yes, ma'am. Oh, people have been mad at me. When is the new music coming out? Yeah, for ten years, you know. Tell, finally, tell me, finally. tell me. I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, the last time I made music, um, I'm, I'm a I'm a piano wasn't as big as it is. Definitely not. I think every African we strive to have our music go global. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always proud and inspired by uh, the Afrobeats sound because it comes from home. It comes from the, mo the, the mother continent. I'm inspired now by what Ama Piano is doing, right? The last time I made music, what was big on radio was house music, mm. Afro house in South Africa, yes. right? Um, and, 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 and to be here now and, and, and be caught between what genre do we make? Do I make Ama Piano? Do I make... As I did say earlier on, I was like, Smoo, block yourself from trying to do what's hot. Block yourself from trying to compete with younger artists. Block yourself from succumbing to any pressure. Just do what fits you and mm. just make a good song. For me, it's not even good music or good album. It starts with just one. It's like you with a podcast. Yeah. It's every episode has to be better than the one before. Most definitely. So I strive to every song has to be better than the one before. So I think... What we delivered right now has been that. I think my audiences also, they'll be proud that I have delivered um, an album that was worth the wait. And also, I think um, they also understand that I'm not in the game of competing and, and trying to be on the top 10 charts. But I think they understand that I'm in the game of delivering good music. Same way when I release a new book, I have to deliver a good product because yeah. I believe in bodies of work, mm. right? So if I deliver album, it has to be a good album, it has to be a good book, it has to be a good podcast episode, it has to be better than the one before, it has to be a better radio show than the one before. If I'm in this interview, is this, am I saying or am I, you know, getting myself out there better than I did on the previous interview. So it's, you always have to be better than you. You're not competing with anybody. Mm. You, you have to compete with, with self. Just better yourself, better your craft, better your delivery, better your talent, sharpen your skills, mm. meet, meet other people. Don't compete, but collaborate. Not compete, but collaborate. Mm. I'm with you. I'm also curious to know about your upbringing because I think I've read a lot of stories around you and it's very clear that it was not such an easy um, upbringing. Yes, ma'am. So could you take me back to that? I, I think um, we're very blessed to be living in this time and be living our dreams. You know, when I sometimes see artists or creative people complain, they're complaining that time with 100,000 subscribers or followers. And you think of people who are really struggling out there. Yeah. And then you look at them, you're like, you're not struggling. You know, don't, don't come in and complain. I look at my upbringing and I attribute it to my mother. I'm blessed that my mother is still alive. I, I've lost my father um, recently. Um, Sorry about that. Five years that. ago. Thank you. Um, the father who, who brought me up in Tatele Ope, he brought me up. Um, but I was given birth by my uh, biological father, um, Ubabu Nkosi, Boy Boy, um, Fox, Mike Nkosi. And I've just recently changed my name from Sibusiso Leope to Sibusiso Leope Nkosi. Over the past couple of years, I've been going through a journey of um, self-discovery. Mm. I've been going through a journey of um, searching my family tree, whose I am, where do I come from? Where does my father's 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 father come from? What are my origins? Who really am I? Mm. Right? And I just went down that rabbit hole of seeking that. And it, it geez, man, I, I discovered so much about myself. And I wouldn't say that I've had a, a tough up, upbringing, but I think I've had an ordinary African upbringing where um, it takes a village to raise a child. I grew up where we can go next door and borrow sugar. Mama said I must come and borrow some sugar, you know, um, where if we see an elderly lady coming from, from the taxis, we go there, she's holding plastics, we help her out. You're in a bus, you know, an elderly person walks in, you stand up and, you know, you make way for them to sit down yeah. in that African Ubuntu. And I think for, for, for where I am right now when I look back, 
I wouldn't say that was a difficult upbringing because my mother's going to be mad at me. My mother is first going to come in, uh, come here and say, have you ever slept one night without eating? <laughs> and I'm not going to answer that question. So just stop telling people that you, yeah. you grew up poor because you didn't. We did all we could yeah, to provide yeah. for you. So um, I'm, I'm just grateful for all the blessings. But mm. I'm also a hard worker. I believe in myself. I believe in my dreams. I'm a creative person. I apply myself. I go for my dreams. I go for whatever I want. And I believe that I'm so blessed that I will achieve anything I set my mind to. Mm. And with with the, the years that I've lived, I've been able to do that. I've achieved so much, um, you know, through, through the blessings that God has, has bestowed upon me. But my message out there to everybody else is don't look at yourself as a victim because you're not a victim. You're a victor, right? Even though you come from those circumstances, what are you doing with the little that you've got right now to create other things? What are, what are you doing? Like, are you waiting for somebody to give you a call? Are you waiting for somebody to give you a job? Mm. Why don't you create a job for yourself? Why don't you employ yourself? Why don't you create work for your homies? Create work for, do you know what I mean? Like I was listening to Tina saying, from here, we're going to go to a, a radio station, Trace. Uh, by the way, my brother hosts the afternoon radio show there. I'm like, that's dope, right? You're creative, you're vocalist, you write music. Your brother is on radio. It's like these are young people who are not sitting back and waiting to be given a job. They're doing something with their lives, with their God-given um, blessings and creativity that God yeah. has bestowed upon them. Same as you. If I go to your Instagram right now, you're a cinematographer, you're a podcaster, broadcaster, you're an entrepreneur, you're passionate about young people, you're passionate about the media space, you're passionate about PR and marketing. I can already relate to the fact that I do all these different things. I look at another person that I'm sitting with before I even sit with you, before I even met you. I'm like, she, she does all these different things. So at least... Um, real recognizes yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.